Today I fucked up by telling a dude we've been watching him for years. Obligatory this didn't happen today blah blah and also I'm on mobile. Strap in suckers, come and revel in my awkwardness. So, for literally years now this dude has been running around about a 3 square miles in my area. The only reason I've ever noticed him was because of his flowing hair that gracefully blows behind him as he runs and the frequency that we saw him at. When he started, he was a little overweight but dude is so committed that he literally runs in rainstorms wearing trash bags and is very fit now. So my fam and I are watching this guy's transformation happen, which is kind of exciting to me because I'm into fitness. Over the years I would cheer him on privately, while inside my car. I would be like yes, you got this my dude. In an attempt to make my kids laugh, it became a thing. It was there's my dude. Or oh man, I haven't seen my dude in a while. I hope he's okay. Or my sister would say I saw my dude today. Kind of just an inside joke. But again, this is for years and years. Even after seeing him all the time while driving, I never actually ran into him in person on my walks. That brings me to the today I fucked up portion of the post. I decided to go a different route recently, I look up and through the sunlight in the trees I see a glorious golden mane of hair. I think holy shit holy shit. Today's the day I meet my dude. He's getting closer now, I feel incredibly stupid. Why the fuck did this my dude? dude thing even start again. He's closer now. He's much taller than I thought and that throws me off and I let him jog past. I think fuck. I can't just not say anything right? And guys, I really wish I didn't say shit. I really wish I went home and called my sister and fake fangirled over walking within inches of this mythical man with the hair. But I'm an idiot. So I turn and yell excuse me. And he swishes his marvelous hair around, still jogging in place and just looks at me. I say we've been watching you for years. He's like huh? And I say we've been watching see high on you. Like he couldn't hear me or something. Instead of what he really meant which was probably what the fuck and he's still jogging like what i stammer we've been watching you run i mean me and my family watching you run for years you look great way to go dude and you guys i gave him a fucking thumbs up like a weird xanax top soccer mom he says oh cool thanks and just kinda runs away at this point i feel kind of then it hit me how fucking awkward and creepy and fucked up what i said and how i said what i said i tell my husband and he's like wish you weren't so awkward bud i tell my kids and they are like ah wow mom tell my sister and she cries laughing because of how typical this is of me to be so awkward i mean like i literally told a grandma don't eat the baby the other day at the store while she was nibbling on her grandkids toes playfully anyway the main reason i'm even typing this besides so you freaks that like to cringe at others idiocy can read it is that since i appeared to be some weird version of cia slash fbi slash illuminati slash soccer mom to my dude he has been nowhere to be found I have not seen him running around at all and I feel so bad that I may have maybe possibly kinda weirded him out enough for him to change the entire area he has been running for years, which is awful. So, my dude, if you see this, I am so not watching you in any way other than to admire your hair and admire your dedication to fitness. I apologize profusely and if I ever see you again I promise I won't say shit and to that grandma. If you're on reddit, seriously you shouldn't eat babies. I'm not apologizing for that shit. Dot. TL, drive. Told a dude that we've been watching him for years, when I really meant we had been watching him run slash get fit and he was doing a great job. Haven't seen him on his route since. Update. He's gonna read this and be 20% less creeped out. I think maybe more creeped out that it was such an important event that I was compelled to write about it on the internet. I tell my husband and he's like wish you weren't so awkward bud. Dot. See, now there's a good friend. Should get him a puppers. Oh man, I can sympathize with the awkwardness, and will take this story as a warning in my own life. I'm a jogger in my own neighborhood, and there's a girl that I pass who I've been noticing for years. She started walking with heeled boots and jeans and bad hair and wouldn't look me in the eye. Looked miserable. Over the years as I'd pass her while she was walking, she slowly upgraded to tennis shoes, running clothes, and eventually even returned my tiny wave. I saw her in the grocery store once, and she looked fabulous. Her hair was styled, 
and she was dressed to the nines. She looked me in the eye with confidence, and I hurriedly glanced away, aware that I was staring. I wanted to say something so bad about how happy I was that she seems much happier these days. Now I'm glad I didn't, lol. The next time I saw her walking, she had a stroller with a kid in it. All this happened over a period of about 5 years. See, it's nice to admire someone's glow up from afar. I'm just so awkward I couldn't help myself. But as my sister pointed out, one of us could have been a serial killer, embarrassed smiley face. Loved this. It's completely something I'd do. Actually I've done worse. I'm an artist. For months I took the same train at the same time at the same car. And I always drew on the train, on a little sketchbook. And there was always this guy there, he has an amazing jaw, great for drawings, he was always my top model, without knowing it. So one day I was at the platform, he stands next to me, I feel comfortable, he's a part of my life, he's all over my sketchbook. He asks me what time was it and oh. I was listening to this voice, 6.05 pm I say, and I should have stopped there. But I don't, I always draw you. He stares at me, what? And I am so fucking clueless I didn't realize what a creeper I was. Oh yes. I have this notebook. I always draw on the train. And I have dozens of drawings of you. Great jawline. And I open a big smile. He says nothing. Steps back. I never see him again. At least you'll always have those drawings of his jawline. Today I fucked up by inviting my father to my Animal Crossing town. So my dad has always liked video games, which I thought was really cool and was a great interest to share growing up. He likes chill building games, like SimCity, Minecraft, etc. He's an engineer through and through and likes applying that in his games. He was really, really into the original Animal Crossing when my brother and I got it. Like, he would kick us off in the evening so he could play all night. So I try to recommend my dad games whenever I come across something I think he'll like. I was on the phone with him recently and told him he should use my brother's Switch and play the new Animal Crossing. He'd love the terraforming and at the very least enjoyed the nostalgia of playing Animal Crossing again. I told him he should start his game and play for a while and then come visit my island so he can appreciate how much work I've put into it. What I forgot, somehow, while I was on the phone, is that my dad is a fairly conservative Christian. Not hardcore, but definitely disapproving of some things. What I forgot, somehow, is that my island is entirely weed themed. I have a weed farm, a dispensary, a weed cafe, my character has a fucking weed hat. Also, my island is called Come Town. Too long didn't read, I'm the biggest dumbass I know. Lol you were able to call your island Come Town? I was told there was inappropriate language in the name Eastwatch and after staring at it for a while I found twat hidden in there. According to Nintendo, come is legal. Ha 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 this was glorious to read. Tell him you like it BC it's funny. If you're an adult then he shouldn't have too much of an issue with it. As a Christian dad, who enjoys weed, I would have asked more why you named your island something stupid that others would see. Then I would tell you that you probably have a problem if your whole town is weed themed. Then I would light a bowl and laugh at how uncomfortable you were and then your mom and I would laugh. Then I would tell you I told you mom you named your island come town and watch your face as you become mortified. Then we would make fun of you a lot and your mom would ask when you came over how the villagers of come town were doing and we would laugh again as you awkwardly shuffled around. You would not live it down. Your first step into heaven Jesus Christ himself would ask you about the villagers of Come Town. Come Town, there is nothing like it. We should be neighbors. My island is called Cornhub. Today I fucked up by accidentally getting my 66 year old mother high. Disclaimer, happened yesterday but I just realized it qualifies for this thread. Also, long time reddit stalker, noob reddit poster so go easy on me if I don't do it right, I know y'all can be vicious. So I, 29m, work at a smoke shop, 
so it's a safe assumption I smoke weed. This will be relevant in a second, I also live with my 66 year old mother and take care of her because my father left her to early age, and when we moved to Florida her family disowned her for refusing to join the Church of Scientology. I'll pause and allow you to process that. Anyway, my mom put up with a considerable amount of delinquency from me growing up, and it has somewhat dulled her sense of disappointment in raising a 29 year old convict who works in a smoke shop, she may not agree with everything I do, but she is supportive and loving even if she doesn't understand me. One of the things we have always shared was our love of cooking, spending time in the kitchen with my mom has always been a way for us to connect. She strongly dislikes that I smoke, but she tolerates it. We have made edibles together in the kitchen as a way for her to relate and us spend time together. It's always enjoyable and she gets excited with me when I have a new recipe even if she doesn't like the fact that it will probably get you high for two days. So yesterday I bought a magic butter machine. Quest mark, as well as a quarter pound of mid-high grade cannabis, and I was super excited to make my first batch of tinctures. That said I only used an Oz of Bud for two cups, 473 milliliters, of 190 proof grain alcohol. Still a lot for a 66 year old woman who hasn't smoked weed since the 70s. My mother was naturally excited for this latest culinary cannabis experiment and wanted to be a part of it. Unfortunately the machine makes everything very simple and easy, so there wasn't much to do. After decarbing the bud and measuring the correct amounts, it was set to run for 8 hours and good to go. I decided to run it while I was at work figuring it would be done by the time I got home. Here's where I fucked up. My mother in her naive innocence wanted to help and monitor the process. My dumbass didn't tell her to leave it well enough alone. For those of you who don't know one of the recipes for a tincture calls for grain alcohol and heat. So my mother decided to check on my project while I was at work took the lid off and got a face full of 190 proof heated alcohol infused cannabis fumes. She called me at work, so stoned she couldn't talk, and I had to talk her into her bed. That was at 5 pm in the evening, it's 5 am and she's still stoned, munching away, trying to collect her thoughts in between fits of giggles and berating me for getting her baked when she has shit to do today. Too long didn't read. Today I fucked up by not warning my 66 year old mother to leave my edible project alone and accidentally got her stoned for the foreseeable future according to her. Edit added links and my poor attempt at correct grammar. Edit recipe quantity and proportions for anyone who cares. Edit because it's been brought up so much. 1. Holy shit this blew up. Thank you for the awards, if I could figure out how to thank you personally I would. I'm trying to reply to as many comments as possible but I may not get everyone. 2. This isn't an advertisement. I only bought the damn thing because it was cheap, because I work at a smoke shop. The only reason the damn picture is up is because I included the link and don't know how to take down the picture. Making oils and butter at home is easy, you don't need to buy this. I'm just lazy. 3. My mother is fine. A bit grumpy because it messed her sleep schedule up, but other than that we both laughed about it and she enjoyed it so much she asked me to make her some much lower strength butter for her to cook with. Still better than Scientology. My wife once ate a pot brownie because she didn't believe it had pot in it, I warned her as she went to eat one. She thought I was kidding, even after her cousin and I adamantly said there was a lot of THC in them. After about 30 minutes she realized we were telling the truth, then proceeded to eat three cans of Pringles and sit on the couch trying to do homework with some understanding classmates. I must admit that I always get a kick out of reading. Accidentally ate an edible stories. More often than not, it's humorous and harmless. High five to your mom. My kids returned from a camping trip with some leftover ramen butter. Just about half an inch left in the jar, camping stuff dropped off in the garage. It's no better as mice get into the garage, so I'll toss any food. I polished off the remainder, you know where this is going. Proceeded to get the riding mower and finish mowing the front yard, about one acre. Oh, I was laughing my head off making crop circles. Back and forth was too boring, so loops with loops were just so fun. Finally, put the mower away, took a shower, and crashed out for a few hours. My wife got home, wondering what the hell I was thinking when she saw the lawn. Found the empty jar and put two plus two together. Turned out I had eaten eight doses. First time I had slept that well in years. 
my grandparents once ate pot brownies I left at my place. They came over and I wasn't home. Naturally they helped themselves to coffee and brownies, d. Got a call later complimenting me on my baking skills. Skills of getting them baked. Saving this to possibly look into getting that machine. My dad has COPD but needs the pot for his anxiety issues. He really doesn't like other ways of imbibing, but can do edibles, even if they take a while to take effect. Maybe that thing will help me make things for him. Also, thank you for the warning. I don't smoke slash drink slash do anything to get me high because I like it far too much. I tend to become completely obsessed and forget how to live once I start doing something. I'll know better and leave it alone lol. Would strongly recommend looking into the machine. My mother has died diabetes, COPD and severe nerve damage. I use CBD lotion to help with the pain. I was hoping to make her some edibles to get her relief without having to smoke, seeing as that's bad for people with COPD, but now I don't think she's as interested.